What's going on guys? Andrew just got me to go out there and we were hunting for some hermit crabs for his fish tank. We saw some fish. It was a good day. It was really cold. We could only stay out for so long, but hope you guys enjoy the video. Welcome back underwater. First I want to apologize for the bubbles on the lens. It gets better shortly so I hope it doesn't bother you. Here we have a spiny lobster. Although they are in season and Andrew and I are capable of catching them, if you look you can see a missing antenna. I could be wrong but that looks like someone previously caught him, caged him, and had to throw him back due to his size. I'd rather not rough him up anymore. This reddish colored fish is a gray snapper. I know them as mangrove snappers. They typically are found around reefs and mangroves. I believe I've heard people call them grovers before. This one is too small to harvest, but normally they are wary of divers, so it is more common for them to be caught on hook and line. Here's a blue tang, beautiful color. This tang is similar to Dorian Finding Nemo. However, that fish was based on the regal blue tang. They have different color patterns. This torpedo shaped fish is a sand diver. We call them lizard fish. These fish are usually buried up to their heads, waiting for prey to swim over them. But Andrew stirred this one up so we can get a better look at it. As this wrasse swims by, we can watch an extremely territorial damselfish harass it. It's known as a sand reef wrasse. This fish has an extremely slippery mucus covering the length of its body. This yellow fish is a three-spot damselfish. He appears to only be sporting two spots, and that's because the spots are usually not visible at all stages of growth. This blue damselfish with the spots is a yellow-tailed damselfish. Aquarium enthusiasts probably know it as a jewel damselfish. And that's a school of baby parrotfish and wrasse munching on corals. These bright yellow fish are French grunts. I won't be able to help distinguish the other grunts, but there are Spanish grunts, blue striped grunts, and Caesar grunts joining in this school. This red band parrotfish is flaring its dorsal fin because he's probably bothered by how close I'm getting. It's not that great of an idea to touch marine life, 
but with these Christmas tree worms, only slight disturbances can cause them to retract into their holes. They'll return again after a few seconds. Here's a lobster shell. There's no lobster living inside. Lobsters actually grow a larger shell inside the existing one and break out of it after it gets too large. This process is called molting. A closer look at a yellowtail damselfish. The translucent tail will eventually become yellow and the fish's body will darken and lose its blue coloration with only a few spots remaining. I've only seen in pictures, but the intermediate phase is spectacular. While doing some research, I've discovered how similar juvenile blue angelfish are to juvenile queen angelfish. I'm going to call this one a blue angelfish due to the straightness of its center stripe. That was the only tell I could find that wasn't heavily disputed. A long spined urchin wedged in a rock head. If these tires underwater intrigue you, after my video do a quick search of the Osborne Reef in Fort Lauderdale. It was a massive failure. And as kind of a ribbon cutting ceremony, Goodyear was reported even dropping a gold painted tire from the blimp scene in my last video. Alright, back to the fish. Here we can see into what is probably the home to these two fish, a juvenile angel and damsel. You can see they probably spend quite a lot of time fighting the changing currents because they are so small. If you're wondering why my hands are no longer shivering, yes I did set my camera down for a steadier shot. But alas, my family did get me a better camera, so in the next videos, expect to see improvement. A beautiful hogfish leading us under a rock, but what does he bring us to? Look at this funny porcupine fish. My dad and I have noticed some of these fish appear very thin and elongated, while others seem healthier and full. I'm not entirely sure why this is. This staghorn coral is home to lots of fish as you can see here. This grouping of corals doesn't look extremely healthy, but over here there seems to be some doing a little better. Under me, there are two yellow jacks and a red grouper. I wish I was more stealthy about how I approach these fish because they appear to be up to something before they notice me stalking them. I definitely did not receive the Spotted Moray's memo about no more paparazzi.
you guys like what I'm doing out there, don't forget to like and subscribe. We'll be posting more videos of nature, underwater, fish. Like I said before, for all of you guys living in really cold states right now, I hope you guys can enjoy us, be able to hang out outside, diving for you. So stick around.